Well, hello there and good afternoon. My name is Georgie Newbury and I'm a flower farmer and florist based here in Somerset between fashionable Broughton and up and coming Wincanton. Somerset is a really lovely place to visit in case you were thinking about it. And if you look on my website, you'll find a links page with lots of nice places to stay listed. Anyway, I digress. Today, we're going to talk about why I think that midsummer is the beginning of the flower growers year. And the answer is, whether you're Northern or Southern Hemisphere, if you live in a relatively temperate zone where you can sow flowers in the summer that will grow on through the winter without freezing to death or drying to death, that you get a bit of winter, but it doesn't have to be not too cold, then you can sow a kind of flower called a biennial. And a biennial in its natural state is a flower. Now I'm going to get really interesting, which is why I'm leaning in here. A biennial normally, when growing in its own way, will set seed and drop its seed in the autumn. And because it does that in the autumn, the seed doesn't germinate quickly enough and make big enough plants for it to flower the following year. However, if you are growing flowers, you can sow biennials a little earlier than the seed would set in the wild. And that way you can have them flowering the following year. What, a what kind of flowers are biennials? I hear you cry. Well, for example, this very, very beautiful foxglove is a biennial. There are many, many different colours and shapes and sizes. Uh, this is good old fashioned alba, which is Latin for white. But you knew that. <laughs> um, and it is also covered in black fly. Now, don't go eh. And don't say, oh, why hasn't she got rid of the black fly? The answer is that imagine the feast of protein each one of those black fly make for the birds and the other beetles that like to munch on them. So if you find that you've got flowers with black fly on, leave them. And you may go back a week or so later and find that there are ladybird larvae all over the place eating them. I'm going to make another film about encouraging wildlife into your garden next. And you will see all about that when I make that film. Um, so foxgloves are a biennial and sweet william is a biennial, lovely scent. Sweet rocket, I talk about it a lot at the summer of year because it's a top favourite of mine. See my other my other piece about my top five flowers to have flowering in June and you'll find a biennial in there, uh, find a sweet rocket in there. And this one's an absolute winner. This is honesty. And this is where I can demonstrate the seed situation. So honesty is a very pretty sort of paniculata shape. It's not unlike the sweet rocket as a flower shape. I call it a paniculata shape, um, but it flowers a little bit earlier. So this was flowering, this is flowering in June. We've had a very late spring here in Somersetshire. Um, and the honesty was flowering through April and May. And now it's setting seed. And can you see, it's great this, because you can see really clearly, can you see all the little seeds that are developing in the seed heads there? Well, that's, they will not be ripe until September. So they won't sow themselves until September. I want my honesty plants to be flowering next year. So I'm sowing honesty uh, with obviously not this seed, <laughs> with other seed, uh, so that I get plants flowering at the beginning of next year. These, as a side issue, are very, very handy for your Christmas wreaths and your autumn wreaths because these seed pods dry very beautifully and develop a sort of silvery, they become silvery, very, very fragile, paper thin, 
and they're just lovely in your autumn and your Christmas wreaths. So um, I will be demonstrating with those later. So I'm going to, later in the year, so I'm going to leave this to uh, mature, leave the seed to mature, um, and I'll harvest it later in the summer. But meanwhile, I'll be sowing the seed in order to have a great crop of biennials for my early spring next year. Now, I always feel as though I'm going to have a cup of tea. While I'm doing this, I'm drinking tea. This mug is made by my uh, friend, Rachel Pedder Smith Designs. How lovely is that? And she makes lots of different uh, sort of horticultural designed mugs. I think they're beautiful. They're bone china. I have a thing about bone china mugs. And they're big. So I can have a big, which is unusual for bone china is often small. A big bone china mug <laughs> with pretty patterns, nice pictures. Big enough to have a good sized cup of tea. I don't want to drink a thimble full. I want, you know, get some liquid. Mm. Anyway, I will be sowing these seeds on Friday the 18th of June on a workshop, an online workshop, which you can book a place on via my website. Uh, where do I get the seeds from? Well, I get them from, I know this is back to front, but I'll tell you. Chilton seeds are an excellent purveyor of lots of different kinds of biennials, uh, including these, which are foxgloves, and of course, poison. They're poisonous. Very, very interesting. Uh, that foxgloves, of course, it's belladonna. You have to be very careful, digitalis. You do have to be careful with foxgloves. I'm very wary of putting foxgloves in uh, wedding flowers, for example, for fear that a small child would pick up the posy and possibly stick it in its eye or eat it. Be very wary if you're a florist with your poisonous plants. Anyway, poisonous digitalis or foxgloves. Um, and my other top recommendation for seed buying is my friend Higgledy Garden. And I happen to know he has a bundle of biennial seeds available to buy now. Uh, and there's 25% off. So you get quite a good deal from our Higgers, who is a good friend and lives on a boat in Cheshire most of the time uh, with his dog Flash. And um, he's a, just a good fellow. So you could buy seed from him if you were going to choose. I don't know much about seed suppliers in the good old US of A. Although I suspect Florette do a fine line of biennial seeds as have for many years, good old Johnny Seeds. So have a look at them. If you type in to the seed suppliers website, biennials, you should get a nice list and um, you'll get Honesty comes in white, lilac, but also there's one called Corfu Blue, much sought after. I'm very keen on that one. And um, obviously Sweet William comes in every colour under the sun. Uh, I grow all the different colours. There's one, there's a mix called Auricular Eyed Mix, which I'm very keen on. Uh, Fox gloves come in many different colours. But the other things that you could be growing are Canterbury Bells, great by an elder to grow and don't forget your wallflowers because they flower the first and I haven't got any to show you I have no Canterbury Bells to show you because mine failed last year there you go <laughs> best laid plans and all that and uh, the wallflowers are thoroughly well and truly over and they are the first to flower for me and they are absolutely worth sowing because an early wallflower in flower gives you a scent of honey in the still quite dark, dank days of winter. And it's a scent full of hope. You can't beat it. You really can't beat it. So it's worth, really worth growing wallflowers for their scent. Anyway, if you want to know more about sowing your seed and top tips for how to sow, how to germinate, it's quite difficult to germinate, it can be tricky to germinate seed in the height of summer, um, but I have some top tips. Uh, how to sow, germinate, best compost, best practice, 
um, when to prick out, when to plant out, what kind of beds to plant them into, all of that. Do join me on Friday, the 18th of June, 2021 at 4.30 p.m. British summer time. You'll have to book a place through my website and I will see you then. Meanwhile, just don't forget to order your biennial seed and sow it so that you'll have beautiful flowers for next spring. I really feel as though sowing biennials is stealing a march on the year. And then all your neighbours are madly sowing seed in deep midwinter because they're worried they're not going to have anything in the garden in the early spring. And you can sit back and put your feet up by the fire because you can think, Haha, no, I'm all right, Jack. Anyway, thank you very much for joining me. If you have enjoyed this clip or any of the other clips, please subscribe to the channel and don't forget to press the bell icon so that next time we have a new video, you'll be reminded that you might like to watch it. Coming up next, I think, will be a how to tempt wildlife into your garden uh, clip. And I'm thinking also some my favourite tools might come in handy and I'm not talking about people I know. Anyway, have a lovely evening and I will see you soon.